Ahead of the Defence Strategic Review due to report early next year, Australia is being urged to consider a multi-billion dollar investment in new aircraft. The US military recently unveiled its newest stealth bomber called the B-21 Raider. They have a range of up to 5,000 Ks and are capable of carrying out unmanned missions. For a closer look at what these bombers could add to Australia's capabilities, let's bring in Marcus Hellier, a senior defence analyst with the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. Marcus, great to see you. Thanks for your time. What's, no problem. So what's your, your analysis? I, I know that you've written a, a paper on this. What's your read? Should we be taking a, a look at acquiring some? We definitely should be taking a look. So we're not saying rush out and buy it. We think it's about a $25 billion investment, so you don't want to be spending that amount of money without doing your due diligence. And we don't even know if the US will sell it to us. But they've agreed to sell us nuclear submarines, so the rules have changed in the last few years, being driven by the rise of China's military power. So I think they would sell it to us if we asked. So it's an incredible looking aircraft. We've got these pictures of the unveiling and, and so what sort of capacity does it provide? Well, the first thing it would give us is range. And the big challenge our military is facing at the moment is it's fundamentally outranged by Chinese military capabilities. So if we're talking Chinese missiles, Chinese bombers, they've got a huge raid range advantage over us. So the thing that the B-21 would give us is about 5,000 kilometres of range. And so if you draw a circle on, on a map, and we've got maps in the study, that projects out a very long way. So anybody who wanted to think about operating against Australia would have to factor into that that we could reach out and strike them first. The other thing it gives you is huge weapons carriage. So it can probably carry about six times as much as the F-35 strike fighter that Australia is acquiring. So it gives you, it can carry a lot more weapons and it can carry them a lot further. So in terms of the cost benefit, you, you could have a scenario where they, if the aircraft can travel so far, then those long range, more expensive missiles aren't necessarily needed, are they? You could have, the, you could have cheaper short range missiles because the aircraft does the does the well, work. That, that's exactly right. So what we're saying is you need to do a bit of a cost-benefit analysis. Missiles look cheap, but the further you want a missile to go, the more expensive it's going to be. So some of the cool new hypersonic missiles that people are talking about, they could be, you know, $10, $20 million a pop. So, you know, you start firing a few of them and the cost mounts up pretty quickly. Whereas with uh, the B-21, yep, you've got a big start-up cost of about $25 billion. But because the, the, the aircraft can go so far and due to its stealth can actually get very close to the enemy, you can use a lot of cheaper weapons. So in the long run, it might actually be uh, more economical to do that upfront investment in the bomber. What's your um, response to the suggestion that this is well, basically a couple of uh, points of view here that say that, say that this is not does not fit our strategic needs and that the cost is, is too much. That, that essentially, if this is all about having a capacity to bomb mainland China, that's it's really not part of our strategic well, outlook. Well, we're not arguing for it to bomb mainland China, OK? Yes, the, the US is... That's one of the roles that it's uh, considering. But for us, I don't think that would be particularly smart. I don't think a country like Australia should be bombing a country that's armed with long-range nuclear missiles. That's potentially asking for trouble. The role we see it in is, is actually a defence of Australia scenario. So being able to reach out and uh, shape the calculus of anybody who wants to be operating against Australia. And, and from a distance. So, does, so this sort of fits in with what Richard Miles, the Deputy Prime Minister, That's said exactly recently. right, yes. He's that, um, he called it Impact impactful projection. Yeah, so we've shamelessly stolen his, his term, impactful projection. And by, what he means by that, it seems to me, is the ability to reach out and put a big question mark on anybody who want to op wants to operate against us. Mm -hmm. At the moment, we're limited to about 1,000 kilometres operating from Australian bases, maybe 1,500 Kilometers, And if you look at a map, that doesn't get you very far out. So you're saying that we have to rethink that projection? Because yeah. it, traditionally, it has... That's been our backyard? Mm. 
We've looked after that, but you're saying we've got to look further afield now. Well, what I'm saying is um, our, our backyard can be sort of impacted by adversaries from much further distance. So, for an example, if the, the PLA, the Chinese military, lodged, you know, set up a, a forward operating base in the, the archipelago to our north, whether we're talking the southwest Pacific mm. or Indonesian archipelago, I'm not saying the Indonesians would invite them in, but if the Chinese did that by force, Australian population centres actually are now within Chinese striking range. So it, we're not just talking about the far north of Australia being in range of Chinese systems, but actually Sydney is, Brisbane is, Perth can be. If, if we simply sit back and wait, you know, we're actually exposing our population centres, our critical infrastructure to the ability of the PLA to strike us. Does this, uh, this sort of capability, is there, any, is there any match for it right now in the region? Uh, no. This, this stealth capacity that well, this aircraft provides? Th this is one of the key questions, is, is how long will that stealth capacity last for? It's a similar question to nuclear-powered submarines, like how long will submarines remain undetectable for in the water? It's a similar question. At the moment, the, the stealth on the, the, the predecessor of the B-21, so the B-2 bomber, is still highly effective. The B-21 is a generation or two beyond that. So my view is it's going to remain very effective in our region for, for many decades, several decades at least. Now, if you wanted to, you know, attack mainland China, you know, it's a, a different issue, and I'm, but that's not the role we should be thinking of. So I, I think it's going to remain a survivable, effective capability for several decades. I'm, I'm intrigued by this question, though, about the stealth use by date, because mm -hmm. for a massive acquisition like the the nuclear submarines. Is there, a, is there a problem where we see the technology, say, the sonar or tracking technology mm -hmm. of our would-be adversaries speeding up to the extent that they will overtake the stealth technology? So, oh, basically, these things become sitting ducks. At Look, what point does that happen? It, it's a great question. Um, there's a couple of answers. One is, you know, the, the US Air Force is, you know, drawing on the best scientists in the world and they're still investing in it, so they seem to think it's going to hold up for a while to come. The other answer is stealth isn't black or, and white. It's not either you're completely invisible or you're completely visible. What stealth gives you is an advantage over the adversary. So it's, it's radars... Um, can't see you before you can see them. So if you can see them first, you can shoot first. You know, so if yeah. a bomber can see the adversary's air defence system, it can shoot first and destroy it before the adversary launches a missile at the bomber. So yeah. it, it's not black and white. So what we do know is US stealth technology is the best in the world and is likely to remain the best in the world for some time to come. Marcus Hellier from Aspie, thanks for your time. Interesting, Anytime. Interesting debate. We'll talk to you soon. Thank you.